Chapter 1 in the Beginning Paradise Lost Eden's Location According to Scripture In the beginning, after God created the heavens and earth, the world was not partitioned in continents as today. According to Genesis, which was written by a man of African birth, only one dry land mass emerged from the seas. In his description of the third day of creation, Moses, an African Jew, wrote that God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. Genesis 1, verse 9. At God's command, the waters rolled back into one place to reveal a dry land mass. According to Genesis 10, verse 25, this enormous land mass that God called Earth divided itself into continents during the days of a man named Peleg. In the beginning, all continents were united as one interconnected land mass that modern science calls Pangaea, meaning all lands, the supercontinent on this dry land mass called Earth Pangaea, God planted a garden in a specific area named Eden. The dry land called Earth divided itself in the days of Peleg, Genesis 10, verse 25. Where was the Garden of Eden located? Many European Bible scholars placed the Garden of Eden in Iraq. A number of Bible commentaries, Bible dictionaries, and other biblical resources plead ignorance to the whereabouts of Eden's location, stating the site is not fixed. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. preached, No lie can live forever. Truth crushed to earth will rise again. It is time for the scriptures of truth to resurrect the location of this garden in Eden with information that has been buried for centuries beneath the dogma of racism from certain Bible scholars of generations past. Using Moses' Genesis account and a world map, the following facts have been consolidated regarding Eden's location. Fact number one. God gathered together the waters into one place to reveal one large land mass, a supercontinent, Genesis 1 verse 9. In 1910, Alfred Wegener, a Jewish geophysicist from Germany, put forth the Pangaea supercontinent theory and was scorned by many of his peers. Only recently have scientists accepted this theory, though the Bible taught this fact from its beginning. Fact number two. God designated a large portion of the land mass and named it Eden, meaning paradise. In the beginning, Eden had no garden. Genesis 1, verse 10, and Genesis 2, verse 8. Fact number three. God planted a garden in the eastern portion of the land he designated as Eden, Genesis 2, verse 8. Facts number 4. A huge river flowed east through Eden until it reached the garden located on its east side, Genesis 2, 10. Fact number 5. The largest river in the world is an east-flowing river in South America called the Amazon. This river is so powerful that it pumps 20% of the world's fresh water into the Atlantic Ocean, previously known as the Ethiopic Ocean, Genesis 2, verses 8 and 10. Fact number 6. Prior to its reigning on earth, the enormous Amazon of South America flowed eastward through the misty tropics of Eden, the tropical rainforest into Africa, then landlocked on Pangaea, the supercontinent. Fact number seven. The east flowing Amazon flowed into Africa and branched off into four powerful rivers that continued east to water the Garden of God on Eden's east side. Genesis 2 verses 6 
8, 10. Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Fact number 8. When the continental plates of Pangaea were united, the Amazon was not dumping its enormous volumes of fresh water into the Atlantic, but pouring its fresh water into the whole of North Africa so lushly that Moses described Egypt, located in the far east corner of northern Africa, as being well watered everywhere like the Garden of Eden. Genesis 13, verse 10. The Greek historian Herodotus of Heliconassus verifies this by documenting his interview with the Helipolians of Egypt noted for their proficiency in Egyptian history. They informed him that Egypt was a marsh when their first pharaoh men, also called Menes, took the throne. The Histories, Book 2, page 96, translated by Robin Waterfield, Oxford University Press, 1998. Fact number 9. According to Genesis 10, verse 25, approximately 100 years after the flood, the dry land God called earth divided itself, setting the continents adrift. Then the Amazon, the most powerful river in the world that watered all of North Africa, and as far as Egypt and Assyria disconnected from Africa through continental drift, and began dumping its vast amounts of fresh water into the sea, filling what is now called the Atlantic. The East Florin Amazon disconnection from Africa gave birth to the world's largest desert that covers North Africa called the Sahara, meaning the greatest desert, and now neither Egypt nor the Sudan, Havala, is lush. They are now desert land due to the Earth's topographical changes due to continental drift. Fact number 10. According to clues in world maps, South America was connected to Africa before the supercontinent of dry land called Earth subdivided. The scriptures indicate that its east-flowing waterway broke into four powerful east-flowing rivers to water this garden prior to the separation of the continents. Fact number 11. The first river to branch off the Amazon and continue east was named Pison, Spreader. When it exited the garden, it continued east where it surrounded the whole land of Havilah, the Sudan, Genesis 2, verses 10 through 11. Fact number 12. The second east flowing tributary named Gaun Gusher to branch off the mighty Amazon and continued to snake east through the garden, exited, and encircled the whole land of Ethiopia, Genesis 2, verse 13. Fact number 13. World maps show that Ethiopia lies on east side of the continent of Africa, which at that time was part of Pangaea, the supercontinent. Fact number 14. Logic dictates that the Garden of Eden had to lie west of Ethiopia since its eastward flowing river Gion exited it to surround the whole land of Ethiopia located on Africa's east coast. Genesis 2 verse 13. Fact number 15. Moses the African born Jew that authored Genesis also wrote the book of Numbers in which the documents he had married an Ethiopian woman. Numbers 2, 12, verse 1. Therefore, when Moses wrote the Genesis account, he knew precisely where this African country of Ethiopia was located in relation to the garden he described as being west of it. Fact number 16. After the separation of the continents, Ethiopia was situated on the eastern seaboard of Africa. This suggests that the Garden of Eden was in the interior of Africa west of Ethiopia. Prior to Pangaea's separation, Eden itself stretched from the tropical rainforest of South America through the tropical rainforest of West Africa. Today, the planet's largest rainforest is in Brazil. 
on the eastern seaboard of South America, which was connected directly to West Africa's rainforest when the Teutonic continental place of Pangaea were united. Figure 3. Recall that it did not rain initially on the earth or in Eden, but a tropical mist arose from the ground to water the earth. The mist and rainforests of Brazil and West Africa are remnants of paradise lost. Fact number 17. The third east-flowing river that broke off the Amazon and continued far east was Hidekel, today called the Tigris. Undoubtedly, the Tigris exited the garden and traced and traversed the upper border of Egypt and north, leaving it as lush as the Garden of Eden. See Fact 8. This east flowing river continued northeast and reaching into Assyria, then flowed south east into the Persian Gulf through Iraq. Isaiah 7, verse 18. Fact number 18. Since all seas were gathered in one place, there was no Mediterranean Sea that existed above Egypt at the time Eden ex exited, existed. Genesis 1, verse 9. According to Scripture, the Euphrates and the Tigris were river heads that branched off the east flowing Amazon. They paralleled and may have flowed through Egypt into Assyria to empty into the Persian Gulf. Archaeologists verified that a large river ran near the African pyramids of Gaza in ancient Egypt. Noah's flood undoubtedly changed the typology of these four Edenic rivers roots. Genesis 2 verse 14, Genesis 13 verse 10. Fact number 19, contrary to most Afrocentric thought and Christian speculation, the Nile, the world's longest river, was not a river of Eden. The flow of the Nile is not eastward, but rather from south to north and from Ethiopia to Egypt, whereas all four rivers of Eden flowed east. Genesis 2, verses 8 and 14. Fact number 20. By examining a world map, we find that the second east-flowing river called the Gion Gusha not only surrounded the whole land of Ethiopia, but then emptied itself into a gulf on Africa's eastern seaboard called the Gulf of Aden, a transliteration of the word Eden, figure 3. Fact number 21. The land of Eden was so vast that it stretched from South America deep into Africa, where its ground was on its east side. Eden had an east-flowing river so mighty that it broke into four riverbeds that touched the ancient lands of Egypt. Assyria, Babylonia, Iraq, and Ethiopia, all of which were major settings in the Old Testament and in existence today. Two of these rivers of Eden were so well utilized by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar that he made possible the creation of the world's second greatest wonder, the well-watered hanging gardens of Babylon, second only to the greatest wonder of the great pyramids of Gaza in North Africa. These Bible-centered facts destroy both Eurocentrics, Afrocentrics, and Persian mythical theories regarding the Garden of Eden residing in Iraq, or that the Nile was a river in Eden. Proverbs 30, verse 6. When examining the facts in the Genesis account with the hindsight of today's knowledge, it plainly reveals Eden's location has never been in Iraq or a mystery and brings into question why some so-called Bible scholars place Eden's location in Iraq instead of in Africa, west of Ethiopia, the land east of Eden. <laughs>